Uh, the final question is uh, when you look at reducing the national debt, what areas would you consider for fiscal cuts, and are there areas that you would avoid cutting? Ken, we should pick uh, we can start with the comments. Okay. Well, first of all, I would not touch Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. Those are vital and important programs uh, that, we, that we must uh, defend. As I mentioned earlier, there are areas uh, that uh, we can leave to the discretion of the Secretary of Defense if we're talking about uh, uh, DOD, uh, additional DOD uh, cutbacks. Uh, what's important there is to make sure uh, that, that the incumbent or the member of Congress from here, which as an incumbent I am, uh, has a good working relationship uh, with the Secretary of Defense. Liam Panetta is a friend of mine. Uh, he was the director of the CIA when I was chairman of the uh, uh, Intelligence Committee. I have worked closely with him on many different national security issues. Fort Bliss for me and for us is a national security uh, issue that I fully intend to weigh in on. Uh, in January, Leon Panetta is coming here at my invitation uh, to look at uh, uh, Fort Bliss, but most importantly, to get in his mind clearly an understanding of why it's vital and important that we continue the building of the 1.2 uh, billion dollar complex, uh, uh, the new William William Beaumont. Uh, uh, the final question is: uh, When you look at reducing the national debt, what areas would you consider for fiscal cuts, and are there areas that you would avoid cutting? Uh, that that will be helpful because as he looks, which I hope uh, we do this as he looks at ways to cut back, that he remembers the faces of the soldiers and the families that are going to uh, have a lifeline in the new William Bowman uh, uh, Hospital. Uh, I think it's important that uh, we are as fiscally responsible uh, as we can be. I voted against the going into, into Iraq. Uh, we, we should have never gone uh, in there. At the time, everybody thought it was a dumb vote. I think history has, has uh, shown otherwise. Uh, part of uh, the responsibility of an incumbent is to be able to sit, to sit down at the negotiating table uh, with both members of the other party and your own party uh, and work out a workable solution. As a result of the work that I've done in Congress, uh, I have an outstanding relationship uh, with both uh, uh, Leader Pelosi and Speaker Boehner. Uh, it's a tough environment for Speaker Boehner because of those 87 votes that I told you about. Uh, but nonetheless, I can go and sit down and speak to uh, uh, Mr. Boehner and, of course, uh, uh, Leader Pelosi on the issues that are important to us here. In fact, I have invited and she has accepted uh, Leader Pelosi to come here. Uh, and uh, one of the priorities will be to sit down with the board of the Medical Center of the Americas, because if we take back <coughs> control of the House next year, uh, I want her uh, to be on our side as we fight for, for uh, uh, resources for the, for the Medical Center of the Americas as well. Thank you. This is precisely why people are so frustrated with Congress right now and why it has the lowest approval rating in U.S. history. The question was, uh, we have an out-of-control debt, where would you cut? I don't know if anyone heard an answer. We heard about voting against Iraq. We heard about bringing Nancy Pelosi here to El Paso. I want to know where our congressman would cut. Because those are the kind of tough decisions that we sent him and our next congressman up to Washington, D.C. to make. Those are the kind of tough decisions that I made as a city council representative who was part of passing a balanced budget every single year. That means that we had to look at where the revenues were coming in from, that means we had to look at what programs we were going to cut and what programs we were going to keep. I will do that for you in the U.S. Congress. To answer the question, we spend 43% of the world's military budget right now. We are completely overextended overseas. It's unsustainable, and that's the first place that we need to look at cutting. We're in two wars. One of those wars in Afghanistan is stretching into its second decade. We just launched, uh, got into another engagement in Libya that thankfully uh, has ended well. But we have the world's largest uh, military budget. We spend more than almost all militaries combined. 
I think that we can responsibly cut back in our uh, extension overseas. I think that we need to bring troops back from Afghanistan, back from Iraq, to bases like Fort Bliss. I think we need to look at closing bases that we have all over this world and uh, responsibly uh, shrink our military presence overseas. Look, it's not an easy thing to talk about. It wouldn't be an easy thing to do, but those are some of the tough decisions that we have to make if we're gonna get our budget under control. Social Security. The people who paid into Social Security and who are earning uh, their checks back from their investment in Social Security, that needs to be protected. That's inviolable. But going forward for future generations, for my kids' generation, five, three, and one-year-old right now, we need to look at things like means testing. We need to look at perhaps a, a longer, uh, uh, a later age at which my kids are going to retire. That's a tough decision. It's not easy to say it's going to be politicized by my opponent, but those are the tough things that you're going to want me to weigh in on when I'm in Washington, D.C. This is precisely why the U.S. almost defaulted on its national debt this summer, and the incumbent voted against the compromise that was reached so that, that prevented us from defaulting on the national debt. This was after our debt rating was downgraded by Standard & Poor. So we have a Congress that can't get the job done. It's a do-nothing Congress. We have a congressman who's been up there for almost 16 years who's part of the problem. You need to send someone up to Washington who's going to make the tough decisions that are necessary to move our country forward, not for our generation, but for our kids' generation and our grandkids' generation. If we don't do that, we'll lose this country. And we can do much better, and as your congressman, I will.